Now let's talk about negative exponents and fractional exponents. So first of all, for negative exponents, essentially what it means is the reciprocal. So for example, if the question just says simplify x to the negative second power, well, that's just saying one over x squared. So what that means is that neg the best way to think about it is this. There's sort of this imaginary line, right, with the imagine the denominator of one, right, because anything divided by one uh, is itself. And so really here, in order to make this negative exponent a positive exponent, all you got to do is cross that border. So if you're in the numerator, basically by switching to the denominator, your exponent changes sign. So a negative two becomes a positive two. A negative 3.1 becomes a positive 3.1 and so on. Uh, in fact, if it's a positive exponent and you make it switch the border, it'll become the negative version of that number. So notice the number itself stays the same. So this x won't become negative x or anything, but just the exponent becomes uh, goes from positive to negative or negative to positive when it crosses that border. So, so yeah, so basically here, you just make it go in the denominator, leaving nothing on top, which means just the one. So that's that. Now let, let's apply that to this problem. Okay, so applying that to this, there's a couple of different routes uh, we could go here to simplify this. Uh, one route is just to say, you know what, first of all, uh, and usually most questions will ask something like, rewrite this without negative exponents. So, uh, so that's, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to try to rewrite this without any negative exponents. So first thing we could do is first, let's just simplify it. Uh, not worrying about whether exponents are negative or positive. So first, let's just look at the x's. There's an x squared here. Uh, there's an x to the negative 3 there. <clears throat> now, you could think about it in a couple of different ways, but the easiest way is probably just to think about it this way, where here, overall, negative or positive, you're basically dividing. You have an x squared divided by x to the negative 3, and anytime you're dividing, you subtract exponents. So really, looking at these, that's just going to be x, and the exponents here is just going to be 2, minus that negative 3. So I'll just write it out here. That's 2 minus that ne the bottom exponent of negative 3. And similarly with the y's, we could think about think about that the same way there. So here, the, there's a negative 3 here, y to the negative 3. But because we're dividing by this guy, we're subtracting that exponent here. But that exponent is negative, so we're subtracting a negative 1. So that, that, that's basically what we're doing. We could simplify this now because 2 minus negative 3 is the same thing as 2 plus 3, which is 5. So that's x to the fifth. And that's y to the negative 3 minus negative is going to be plus, plus 1. The negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. That's what this whole thing simplifies to. And if we wanted to rewrite this without a negative exponent, well, we got to send this uh, y to the negative 2 across the border. And so here, there is nothing in the denominator currently. So we could just, if we send that down, the y to the negative 2 just becomes y to the positive 2. And the top, the x to the fifth, can just stay there. So that's what that would simplify to. Now here, another thing you could have done here is you could have said, you know what? I'm always going to, whenever I subtract, you always want to take the larger of the two and minus uh, the lower of the two on its side. So here you could have said, you know what? Two is bigger than negative three. So I'm gonna two, do two minus negative three and get the five, and then you would have ended up there. But here you could have said, you know what? Out of these two, looking at the y, the negative one is bigger. So I could anchor the y in the denominator and say, well, that's y to the, so you could have said alternatively, um, the x would have been x to the fifth. But on the bottom, you could have said y to the negative one minus that top of negative 3, and then you would have gotten y, this would then be positive 2, and that would have been y squared, but it's on the bottom. It's the same thing. So you could do it either way. You could, you know, pick whichever one is larger, go there, and then subtract the other one, or you could just, you know, uh, divide it out and then switch over any negative ones at the end if, if need be. All right, let's just do a couple other examples real quick. Uh, that involve fractional exponents. So here's the thing about a fractional exponent. 
it's basically a radical, a root, meaning if you have anything to the one half power, if I were to say what's x to the one half equivalent to, how would you do that on your calculator if your calculator couldn't take exponents? Well, anything to the one half power is just the square root of that thing. So similarly, if I were just to say what's uh, um, uh, 64 to the one half power, that's not 64 times a half, it's rather the square root of 64, and so that would just equal 8. So applying all that here, oh, uh, I, on that note, uh, what about one-third? If it's x to the one-third, that's talking about the cube root, and so on. What about x to the two-thirds? Well, so whenever you have something like this, the denominator of that fraction is the root. So that's still talking about the cube root, but now instead of the cube root of x to the first power, it's talking about the cube root of x to the second power. So that's the cube root of x squared. So in general, if you were to have x to the power of a over b, that b, that's the root being taken, and it's being taken to x to the power of a, where if that's just 1, that's just x over here, right? x to the power of 1 is just x. But anyway, so that, that's how you deal with fractional exponents. So applying that to this guy, let's see, how could we simplify that? Well, a couple of different ways to go about this. What we could do, though, is we could just realize that this 1 half, because this is multiplication between these two guys, we could essentially distribute. So that's going to be the same thing as 100 to the 1 half power, and then times x to the 8th to the 1 half power, right? And 100 to the 1 half is just the root of 100, which is 10. And here, here you have x to the 8th being taken to some power. And if you remember the hierarchy of exponents, whenever you have a power, you multiply the exponents. So multiplying the 8 times a half is going to be 4. So that's just going to be x to the 4. So 10x to the 4 is what that simplifies to. Uh, finally, what if there was a problem that had both a negative and a fractional exponent? And the short answer is just you basically deal with them one at a time. So for example, looking at this, I would probably just first deal with get rid of this negative and say, you know what? I'm just going to make it cross the border. There's nothing on the denominator right now. Uh, so that means that that's just going to go to the denominator and become x to the positive two-thirds. Um, and there's nothing left in the numerator now, which again just means it's a 1. All right, so now we've gotten rid of the negative exponent part of it. Now let's just deal with the uh, uh, fractional part of it. Well, here, what this means is there's a 3 in the denominator of that exponent, so that's talking about the cube root of, of 8 squared. And 8 squared, we know, is 64. And finally, we could even say that the cube root of 64 is 4. And then you could use your calculator for that if need be. Uh, and so the final answer, this this 8 to the negative 2 thirds, it's, that's a funny thing. You wouldn't think that. If, if you didn't know these rules, you'd think 8 to the negative 2 thirds. You'd think maybe that's a negative number because you're maybe thinking negative 2 thirds times, some, times something 8, 8 is going to be negative. But again, the way these rules work, it's actually 0.25, right? 1 fourth. So that's that.